Hello, I am Francisca Pilling, one of the authors of the paper and a PhD candidate in design at Lancaster University in imagination. And here's Professor Paul Colton, the other author of the paper. In this paper, we present an alternative design approach that utilises philosophical lenses to help designers adopt an alternative material perspective of AI for a more considered use in design. We should have an alternative view of AI as we don't fully understand the effects and constructs of AI. Yet the technology is implemented in diverse applications from Netflix to prison sentencing. Here we introduce the notion of philosophical probes as lenses to augment the design process and assist in constructing a theoretical framework for the materiality of AI using Amazon's Alexa as our specimen for alien dissection. The philosophical theory we have adopted is object oriented ontology, or OOO for short. There are many interpretations of OOO, and in this research, we have embraced OOO from the theoretical understandings of the philosopher programmer Ian Bogost. In particular, we present a design framework consisting of three philosophical probes found in his book, Alien Feminology, which are ontology, metamorphism and carpentry. The increased magnitude of quantitative data sets generated by various sources has coincided with significant enhancements in computational power. To this effect, AI is an emergent governing power. The consequences of such technology on society are already significant. Though we are progressively exposed to AI, it is often not perceived as such. And even when it is, the inner workings and parameters of its decision-making processes are obscured and therefore challenging to contest. This obscurity is fostered by ambitious historical visions of creating a machine with a human level of strong intelligence, notably seen in science fictions. The desire to create an AI capable of human level of intelligence is a dominant catalyst for anthropomorphizing AI infused technology. In reality, the typical AI applications in use, such as neural networks, are narrow or weak AI, which is arguably the outcome of failed attempts to develop strong or general AI. Though the two categories of AI have a long shared history, which has materialised into often confusing one category for the other, manifests as AI's definitional dualism, a term used to label the co-evolution of meaning across these two very different and broad interpretations of AI. Here is a basic diagram of machine learning, a type of artificial intelligence, but don't let this diagram fool you into thinking we know all that's going on here. Even though AI is often described as a black box, it is more common that machine learning algorithms are determining social consequential classifications. It is also worth noting human bias resonates and is amplified through machine learning process via the data and the coding. In detail, the internal decision logic that has been coded in machine learning algorithms is altered as it learns in training from the data, where the configuration of learning is intelligible to humans. Machine learning is applied to various problems for which encoding an explicit logic of decision-making does not work. And that act of coding is a two-sided operation in communication where the human codes for the machine to learn. Therefore, we need to speculate how the machine learns as it's very different to how we as humans learn or do things, which brings us to the philosophical part of this presentation. OOO is submerged in speculative realism, the belief of reality outside of the mind that exists independent of human experience. Thus, OOO theorises that every individual thing has its own reality, which does not necessarily correlate with human experiences. As the philosopher Byron states, humans are no longer monarchs of being, but instead among beings, entangled in beings and implicated in other beings. Therefore, 
all actants are equal in a flat ontology. This open-mindedness is necessary for OOO, forging the concept that the term object is not limited to material things, but extends to any given idea or construct. To grasp this alternative way of thinking about things, let's take a deeper look at OOO, though I would like to point out that there are quite a few interpretations of OOO, and we have stuck closely to Bogot's interpretation, though his theories stem from the renowned philosopher Harman. Harman's OOO is constructed with and from the notion of feminology, particularly in challenging Heidegger's theory from being in time. Heidegger advocated that things are impossible to understand in of themselves, but instead are related to purposes, such as the hammer in use. Harman's counterpoint to this view reveals that things are not merely defined through human use, but any use, including object-to-object -object situations. Now that we've had a sneak peek into the roots of OOO, let's get back to applying this to AI. Alan Turing's influential paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, begins with a question that continues to dominate the technological discourse of AI. Can machines think? In the section unironically un titled The Imitation Game, we can ascertain without knowing the details of the game that the objective is to relate machine behaviours and functionality to those of a human conforming to the singular human correlation. An eminent example of placing humans at the epicenter is the construct of AI. Regarding the current ontological system operations, science assumes that the nature of the computer is correlated to the nature of human experience. In the six decades since Turing's question, the operation of the thought of machines has been entangled with humanistic conditions. The construction, programming and improvement of machines are a global industry worth billions, where there is little room to understand the machine as a thing in itself. So to consider the thing in itself, we inspect the ontology of that thing and to flatten the ontology of a thing, Bogo simply asks, what is? Dot, dot, dot. In his book, Alien Feminology, his example is an Atari ET game from the 1980s, where his flat ontology takes the form of diverse lists of ontological things, thrusting alien units together, from the human-made or the naturally formed, to theory and everything in between. Lists are abundantly found in both Latour and Harman's work, as lists capture the many and varied forms of being, their interconnectedness and their inherent partitions. Try it out for yourself. Here is a flat ontological render of revealing that Alexa is simultaneously many different things. There is no elementary unit that comprises Alexa, nor is it its composite. Here, Bogost offers us a model called unit operations to describe the sort of being that exists simultaneously with, yet independently from one another. Let's take this idea a little further. How do all the units within Alexa behave and interact? Bogost believes that a unit means of making sense to another is through the practice of speculation, considering all relations and perspectives of a thing. By tracing the reality of variances between different objects is exposing a unit's operation, the rationale by which objects perceive and engage with their worlds. Just, just as the astronomer understands the stars through the radiant energy that surrounds them, says Bogost, the philosopher can understand objects by tracing their impacts on the surrounding ether. For design, we can diagram this ether into a constellation of unit operations. Here is Alexa's constellation. Here we can trace the surrounding ether and map the alternative perspectives of things and their independent and interdependent relationships. From multiple perspectives, we can speculate, for example, different forms of bias considered beyond what may be present in the learning set. No, this diagram will change depending on the diagram on the thing's perspective you are speculating on 
as each thing has a unique perspective. The second Bogosian tool is metamorphism, the creation of metaphors to try and understand or to describe the experience of things. This way of thinking developed by Bogost was derived from the famous paper written by Thomas Nagel. What's it like to be a bat? Nagel's work focuses on the idea that consciousness has a subjective character. For Nagel, even if the experience of a thing can be explained as a unit operation, it fails to describe the experience of a thing known as the subjective character of experience. For Bogost, Alien feminology accepts that the subjective character of experience cannot be fully known objectively. Therefore, the only way to perform alien feminology is by analogy. The bat sonar, for example, operates like a machine, a submarine. We can create metaphors to understand things by placing human agency on them to make claims about the reality of things, such as using the metaphor that a bat sonar operation is akin to a submarine. Though the liability of anthropomorphism is unavoidable, as we are humans. Though negotiating with things via metaphors, we can recognise that we are admitted from the experience of things, as the sonar of the back can be understood by the metaphor of another thing. In other words, metaphors assess the perception itself, not the perception of things. So what is the metamorphism for Alexa? Amazon uses the metaphor assistant for commercial advertising and provides an insight into the operational dynamics for the user. Perhaps a critical analogy is that Alexa is like a listening device akin to those utilised since the 1950s by the CIA. The practice of metamorphism opens up a multitude of possible speculations about the re weird relationships between objects, which is a powerful design tool to consider how these machines are working beyond our initial understanding. The final probe is carpentry, which is the process of constructing artefacts that do philosophy. Carpentry entails making things that explain how things make their world. Admittedly, an experience we can never fully understand, but by speculating, we can trace the outline of their effects on the surrounding world. This is the process of metamorphizing things for human comprehension. To further our understand about the fabric that embodies Alexa continued when we focused on the opportunity of developing a third party skill available through Amazon's developer site, as can be seen on the left and in the paper. We were able to expose and grapple with the units that compose and bring functionality to skills. The, thus explain how things make their world by exposing their operations of being. Consequently, through the act of carpentry, we were able to expose the ontography and units of Alexa. It is through the skill application that there is a potential and further research to create a skill to get Alexa to perform carpentry on itself. For instance, reiterate its own status or ontological positioning and therefore relay externally to the user or the designer its ongoing processing and operation, which can be seen on this design fiction on the right hand side. This paper present and presentation is a detailed account of using philosophical thinking to create design probes. This alternative design ideology creates opportunities for unexpected conclusions and theories, leading to greater awareness and potentially for designing preferable ways of implementing governing technologies. Our approach to design is a process of making and researching through design to capitalise on alternative ways of seeing. In this case, we use philosophical notions, especially carpentry, to cultivate new methodologies apt for critical approach towards the subversive things. Our research into AI as a material is not at an end, but a proposition to bring in an alternative methodologies and strategies from disparate disciplines to question the nature of technology as a material we can design with. Thank you very much for listening and I really look forward to your questions after. <laughs>